Welcome to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. By the late 1930s, it became clear to many people in the aviation industry that sooner or later, war would be coming. Sooner or later, buildings like this would need to be camouflaged, tape put over the windows. So de Havilland were told to focus on building Tiger Moths and other aircraft in Hatfield. And the Ministry, of course, wanted to make sure that they followed those instructions. Nevertheless, with a bit of covert help from Freeman, they still felt that the Mosquito was worth investing in. So they took the team, led by Ron Bishop, and moved five miles away from Hatfield over to here, to Salisbury Hall. And at Salisbury Hall, they installed the chief designer, the design team, and the engineers. And here at Salisbury Hall, hidden well away from interference from the Air Ministry, this was where the Mosquito prototype was first designed. Years after the war, when Walter Goldsmith bought Salisbury Hall, he discovered that there were drawings on the walls of mosquitoes. And from that, he deduced that there was a link between this building and the headquarters back in Hatfield, where de Havilland were promising, we're not building the mosquito at all, at least not here. The team built a barn just here where the museum is located today. And in that barn, they started work on the Wooden Wonder. They pretended to be farm workers, but somehow farm workers turning up at a barn late at night doesn't quite register. However, nobody seemed to notice that here was one of the most secret locations that de Havilland had got. And this is the actual aircraft, the very first prototype of the de Havilland Mosquito. It's standing just a few feet away from where it was originally built. And here in the courtyard outside the aero shop, we've outlined where the original Mosquito prototype would have been when it was built in that barn so many years ago. This 50 foot wingspan wooden wonder resided just here. The nose over there, the two mighty Merlin engines either side. The whole thing was being built by hand in this barn in complete secrecy. There was no airfield here. There was no way you could fly it off. So once constructed, it was disassembled and taken to the nearby Hatfield Aerodrome. There, it was reassembled and it was flown for the first time. The world's first Mosquito built right here. After the Second World War, Salisbury Hall was acquired and they discovered the link with the Mosquito. With the help from de Havilland, they were able to find the original prototype and much work was put into preserving it into the state that you see today. She's been left in the state that she was at the end of her service life. She's the first of over 7,700 aircraft of this type. The so-called wooden wonder. The aircraft that Hermann Goring said he hated more than any other aircraft that the British had built the world's first multi-role combat aircraft. A bomber, a fighter, a night fighter, a pathfinder. All of those roles it performed successfully. One of the aircraft that had more built even than the Lancaster bomber. And when you come to the museum, you can see this original prototype standing here in all its glory, alongside two other examples, a fighter bomber FB-6 and a B-Mark 35. So that is the reason why the de Havilland Aircraft Museum is located here in London Colney and not in de Havilland's headquarters way back in Hatfield. 
This was the skunk works where the story all began. And that's why we have the museum here dedicated not just to the Mosquito, but also to all the other aircraft types that de Havilland designed and built in the many years when it was in existence. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and given you a bit of an insight into wh why we are, where we are here in the museum. Do check out the website for our uh, opening times. Come along and visit us at the museum. Have a look at the buildings here now today and have a look at the many aircraft, including the mosquitoes, that we have at the museum. See you at the museum.